us there. Welcome. Today's topic is spinal flexion, or when we are folding our trunk over our thighs, when we're crossing our hips, when we move uh, towards the pull of gravity or towards the earth or towards the ground. Um, spinal flexion or forward bending is one of the most, I would say, complex group of asanas. Why? Because um, externally it looks like um, it's an issue of hamstring flexibility or we need to have like uh, really uh, uh, flexible hamstrings for us to be able to fold uh, forward. Uh, externally, it looks like that, but um, actually it's more of uh, an issue of mobility around the hips and an issue of the breath, because the breath is a very important when we flex forward, um, because you don't wanna be fighting uh, you don't want to be going against the flow of your energy when you fall forward. Otherwise, if you will fight the flow of energy, if you will if you will move towards the opposite direction of the inherent flow of energy, you might be hurting yourself uh, rather than uh, safely uh, practice this complex. And I would say uh, forward bending is one of the most injurious um, groups of asanas when. Um, we practice this without care and without utmost awareness of the breath and understanding of uh, many components actually surrounding this asana. All right, so there are many, but I will just give you maybe two or three tips. Um, very important principles when we fold forward and how we could actually uh, develop the skill um, so that over time when we fold, when we do the asanas, um, we, we will not be thinking of all of these uh, principles anymore. It becomes like in heaven for us. Um, number one would be this. Um, uh, we need to develop um, hip mobility uh, because the hips, um, for me, are more important uh, rather than the hamstrings because when the hips are open, uh, the spine is able to move uh, with ease around the joints of the hips. So a good drill would be for us to practice um, elements which promote hip flexibility and hip mobility. So what are this? Um, movements where we allow the hips to go actively. All right. So standing poses, of course, definitely. Standing poses are a good way for you to develop our awareness of the hips and course for as well. But I would encourage you to um, do movements such as, yeah, crossing, your knees between the arms and then holding the balance, all right? Because that movement, all right, or jumps or active hip movement, um, when you when you become efficient with um, those elements, it becomes inherent or natural for you um, to just um, move um, with ease and, 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 and I would say space and then um, lightness around the hip region without you overthinking of the asana. Uh, because active movements um, somehow develops the brain to uh, adapt to the movement itself. So when you fall forward, all right, so somehow the brains remember uh, the action. And then you would develop that um, through um, repetitive actions of uh, movements that promote uh, mobility and flexibility of the hips. All right? So um, this, I find this really very useful, all right? um, especially if you're lacking the flexibility of the hamstrings. Because here, you're actually folding forward already, and at the same time, you're developing core strength and then mobility and flexibility of your hips as well. Yeah? Um, number two, um, so uh, right, going back, uh, aside from this, yeah, uh, practice uh, the malasana as well, yeah, with your knees a little bit wider outside the line of the trunk, especially if you're lacking the flexibility of your hamstring. So this one will really help you develop that skill of moving um, efficiently through the hip joints. If there are issues in the ankles, you can actually lift your ankles like this or lift your heels like this and then still perform the asanas. And if this is still too intense for you, all right, try to just um, work on the blocks and then um, develop uh, flexibility of the hips and the hamstrings 
by doing this. And then from here, you may even progress. For example, you're working in you know, arm balancing. All right? Arm balancing or any uh, positions which promote core um, and the strength of the upper back are essentials when you fold forward. Because eventually, as you do the process of forward uh, folding, especially the deep ones, you need to engage that core organically inside without you squeezing the muscles. And you will only develop that once your mind becomes very efficient with acknowledging uh, all other things um, happening in the asana. Yeah? So looks like you're folding forward, but actually uh, something really deep inside you is working for you to be able to do that efficiently. All right, which brings me to the next topic of the breath. All right, because the breath is very important and how the breath together with the action and then how you align and adjust the body as you breathe and move are really very important for forward bends to become, um, um, I would say, safer and effective without you, without you forcing your body to do it. All right. Now, uh, when you inhale, right, especially in the for forward bending, um, when we inhale, <coughs> the inherent um, um, thinking is inhale, open. Like that, right? So, uh, but when we when you fold forward, you wanna um, move the breath. Yeah, your spine still lifts up or elongates, but the spine will not go to an extension because it's a flexion, right? But you don't wanna round the spine as well. So, how do we inhale when we are preparing for a flexion? Because you know you're flexing, all right? So, when we inhale. Right. Instead of you inhale and then the chest opens or the spine extends, like you're doing a back bend now, when you inhale, yeah, the, the spine elongates, but the direction of your, of your breath actually goes to the backs of your body, like you are doing this. Right. Inhale. Like you're scooping that breath to move to the backs of the body and up. All right? I describe this one like you're folding uh, the muscles of tummy, the tummy up and towards the back pockets of the ribs and the sensation actually creeps up here. And the upper back elongates forward but the spine will not go to an extension. Rather, the spine will go to a flexion. It, likes, it uh, looks like from the outside it forms like a dome shape in the front. Okay. Which brings me to the next topic of this. Um, is it really a requirement that the trunk go flat over the thighs, like this? All right. Really press down? No. Uh, all right. It uh, looks like from the outside, yes, you're falling forward, but actually inside, the sensation is the, the, the inner body will actually lift to the backs of the body. So as you fall forward, there's actually a little gap. Yeah? You're not really making your body flat in an attempt to really go to a deflection. Rather, um, as the spine elongates forward like a dome, this one will rise up. Right? See? Instead of me going really flat, it's more of this. It's like a dome shape, yeah? Like a curve, and it elongates forward, yeah? So like the spine keeps moving long, yes, even if you're folding forward, even if you're flexing, the spine keeps elongated, elongating, but in a flexing action rather than extension, all right? Rather than this, where you force the spine to open, which is quite dangerous for the health of your low back and the hamstrings, you are using the core now to support that lengthening or the elongation of your spine towards the horizontal when you fall forward. Thus, now, inhale, are supposed to inhale, yeah? Inhale. To prepare for your folding forward. All right, but that's only the inhalation. All right, exhalation. All right, since the predominant action of forward bending is actually an exhalation. All right, how do we actually exhale when we fold forward? All right, when we uh, flex forward, when we exhale to prevent your spine from collapsing to around, which could bring um, a pressure in the lumbar spine and which could actually hurt on uh, the backs of the body, 
when you exhale, the, the, the mid spine or the, the trunk goes really deep. Feels like the ribs wrap inside. Exhale. And at the bottom of it, actually, now when you're working on the bandas, definitely, but without me being too technical, at the bottom of exhalation, there's a little suction, like a little gentle hook, like a, a, a little gentle lift coming from the core of the body um, as a product of you uh, sliding the, 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 this part of the belly up. Now, you will feel that sensation that actually there's a little grip, yeah? there's a little lock, to keep your spine on that, um, I would say, healthy extension or healthy um, uh, level of uh, openness without you flexing and a gentle uh, lock will create more support, which is the abdominal lock, the Udiyana Bandha, will, will create more support um, in when you attempt to go further forward. So like um, every time you, for example, inhale, exhale, ribs fold in, and um, the sensation will actually be felt uh, rising to the backs of the body like that. So you're forming like a dome. Exhale. As opposed to exhale round, exhale. Keeps the, the, the sensation keeps lengthening, keeps elongating towards the direction of the energy. Inhale forward, exhale forward and down. Because you're hollowing the fronts of the body to create more space for the spine to elongate towards the horizontal all right so in a nutshell so we have to change that mindset when we fall forward we always want to fight the chest forward you, you always wanted to fight the, the spine forward no um, when we fall forward the front of the body goes really empty thus don't be caught up with that idea that the chest should be part of the thighs actually no it's the, the, the front of the body actually lifts up yeah, just a bit to make room for the, the, the backs of your spine to elongate forward towards a flexing position without you rounding the back. All right, so um, the movement up instead of your chest, instead of your spine bouncing back and up on the inhalation, the spine actually surrenders forward like a dome shape. That's inhale and exhale all right so um, it's natural yeah especially if you're engaging the core that this part of your chest will not fully touch the thighs so how um, this one relates to people who are not as flexible in the backs of the thighs yeah all right so um, especially for example you're sitting like that and then um, when you're upright, when the spine is, uh, is upright like this, and then the thighs, obviously the, the, the legs, which has relaxed head. Now, you don't want to really be forcing the chest to touch your thighs, yeah? So keep the rest of your lower limbs, um, I would say, neutral. Now, as you inhale, inhale, slide it in and back. Yeah, so there's a little bit of your shoulders hanging to create room for the spine to elongate. And as you exhale, hollow this even more, but keep rolling this up. And then there. Yeah? So you don't want to be forcing this, because the moment you force your trunk to descend without you having the flexibility of the hamstrings and the mobility around the hips, you are actually uh, overloading that lumbar spine. So an effective, and I would say more uh, meaningful way of folding forward is to feel it inside your body, right deep into the core. Inhaling, as opposed to inhale, inhale. Exhale. See? I am not really flat over my thighs. For example, you're not as flexible. Yep. If you're not as flexible, you might only reach up here. No worries. Yeah? What's important is how does it fit inside and how the core of the body supports the spine in its attempt to elongate a little bit forward. And eventually, together with all the other drills, all the other techniques that I've been talking about, like this, yes, and then some active movements, yeah? organically, you will just develop 
that flexibility of the hamstrings actually uh, you you won't notice it that just one day you can just fall forward with your legs fully open and then fully stretched yeah so um for me that's this that's the most important all right um knowing the relationship of the breath and the movement and how our these are all related to the spine and the body in general, number one. And then number two is work on preparatory elements for you to develop, um, I would say, hip mobility and hip flexibility. So uh, all of these elements combined all together in the future will um, allow you or will, will um, allow you to develop that skill, yeah, so that the mind would uh, just... Uh, adapt inherently without you overthinking or without you thinking of all these elements because if you if you just if you keep on thinking of oh well, what should i do when i fall forward how do my hips uh, behave and etc etc and then you're actually um just putting too much stress yeah uh in your brain that you're going to end up becoming too analytical yeah so really at the end of the day it's practice, yeah. Practice um, uh, elements which work the mobility and flexibility of the hips, and then elements which uh, which will develop your breath pattern. So over time, when you move, you can just combine all of these um, elements together, um, and then apply the realizations not just in forward bend, actually in all actions that we are moving towards the flow of our energy, yeah. All right, so uh, let me know if any other questions. Um, I would be happy to help. Um, yes, just keep them coming. I'll see you next time. Namaste.